Hey everybody, this is Matt Atkinson, and you're watching Four Gettysburg with Aaron Smith. Behind me stands what is most likely the most famous hill in all of American military history. Some have called it Sugarloaf Hill, Rock Hill, Stony Knob, but most famously, it is known as Little Round Top. And on July 2nd, 1863, this hill, not a dominating hill, 650 feet above sea level, will find its way into history. This is Little Round Top, part one. And for Forward Gettysburg, I'm your host, Aaron Smith. Late afternoon, July 2nd, 1863, the Confederates have made their attack on Devil's Den and they are pushing in Ward's brigade on the Union's left flank. Meanwhile, the 4th and the 5th Texas and the 4th Alabama, they are making their way around this part of Big Round Top, this large hill directly to my right, to the east of me. They are making their way around this area. And this is fairly inhospitable area. There are a lot of boulders. There are a lot of trees. This is not great terrain to march your men over and remain in file and remain in organized ranks. Robertson's Texans of the 4th and 5th Regiment and Law's Alabamians of the 4th Alabama have their eyes set on Little Round Top. Meanwhile, the 47th Alabama and the 15th Alabama under the joint command of Colonel William C. Oates, they are making their way to the right of this area. They are somewhere on that south slope of Big Round Top. General Meade is going to hear the fighting pick up on this sector of the battlefield and he's going to hear shots going off and he's going to send for his army chief of engineers, Governor K. Warren, and he's going to tell Warren, Warren, I hear a little peppering going on in the direction of that little hill off yonder. Ride over and if anything serious is going on, attend to it. Warren is going to ride up to Little Round Top and he is going to realize that this hill behind me, only 650 feet above sea level, is the key to the entire Union position. It is a natural anchor for the left flank of the Union line. However, if Robert E. Lee and his Confederates are able to hold this small hill behind me, they will have access to the Tawny Town Road and the entire rear of the Union line here at Gettysburg. Little Round Top is an incredibly key position. Warren, on top of Little Round Top, with the only soldiers there at the time, a small signal station is going to see the collapse of Devil's Den happening in real time. And he's going to send off for the nearest brigade. That brigade will be Strong Vincent's brigade of the 5th Corps, and they are going to be somewhere near the George Weikert farm. Vincent's brigade is the lead element of the 5th Corps who is now arriving to the battlefield here at Gettysburg to reinforce this left flank, which is in trouble. Vincent will lead his brigade consisting of the regiments of the 16th Michigan, the 83rd Pennsylvania, the 44th New York, and the 20th Maine to the south slope of Little Round Top to meet these oncoming rebel attackers. Both sides are going to send out skirmishers and they're going to become quickly engaged with one another. This fight is heating up. Now it's, it's important to note that these rebel regiments that are attacking, they've become somewhat detached from the rest of their brigades. The 4th and 5th Texas, they were making a beeline here for Little Round Top, but the 1st Texas and the 3rd Arkansas, they ended up veering off into that fight at Devil's Den. And, and even the 3rd Arkansas is going to end up all the way to the wheat field and engage in some fighting there. Meanwhile, the rest of the Alabamians, the 4th Alabama, of course, they're making their attack here on Little Round Top, but the 44th and the 48th Alabama, they're going to get, as they make their way 
around this left flank of the Union Army, they will find themselves funneled into this valley here between the Round Tops and Devil's Den and Hauk's Ridge. They will get funneled into that Valley of Death, and they're going to engage with the 4th Maine and the 99th Pennsylvania and some of these other regiments here that are posted in the Devil's Den area. This ground, as I said earlier, is not conducive to effective troop movement. During the Civil War, the tactics were to line up your men and move in a line and provide a volume of fire that is greater than the enemy and cause the enemy to fall back. But when we look at the ground here, it's strewn with boulders. You can see boulders all over the place. There are going to be trees that prevent um, an effective closing of the ranks. And so these regiments are going to become quite scattered as they advance upon Little Round Top. In fact, one rebel soldier is going to describe the ground as having boulders that range from the size of a wash pot to that of a wagon bed. As they were trying to traverse this difficult ground, the fight to their left, they're going on at the, at the Devil's Den, only added to the atmosphere of impending slaughter. Now the 15th and the 47th Alabama, as they make their way up that southern slope of Big Round Top, they're going to encounter elements of the second U.S. sharpshooters. And to avoid those elements, Oates is going to take his regiment up to the crest of the hill, and he's going to pause at the top of the hill. He's even going to say that given enough time, he could have turned it into a Gibraltar. For some reason, Oates thinks that if he just halts on the crest of Big Round Top, that's it for them. However, what is going to happen is that Captain Terrell of Evander Law's staff, Evander Law now taking over for a wounded John Bell Hood, is going to ride up and see these regiments halted at the top of Big Round Top. Now, no doubt these Alabamians must have been exhausted. It was a hot July day. They're wearing wool clothing. They have all of their equipment, their gear, their guns. Not only that, they're out of water, and earlier they had sent 22 men off with the regiment's canteens to refill those canteens and then come back to the regiment so these men can be hydrated, but those 22 men still have not returned. So a halt was certainly in order, but Captain Terrell is going to ride up to him, and he's going to remind Colonel Oates that even though Hood is wounded and out of the fight. His orders were still to advance upon that hill, referring to Little Round Top. And so Oates, very hesitatingly, is going to order his men to advance down the slope. Colonel William C. Oates is one of those fascinating Civil War figures. Just like his counterpart on the Union side, Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. William C. Oates is going to be 29 years old at the time of the Battle of Gettysburg. He was born in Pike County, Alabama. As a young man, he's going to have a somewhat troubled youth. He's going to be well known for having a fighting instinct about him. And he's also going to be raised in crippling poverty. At the age of 16, he's going to engage in a fight with a man in which he strikes him with a mattock a type of pickaxe at the time. And fearing the law coming after him, he's going to travel throughout the Gulf Coast and he's make, going to make his way to Texas. And after some time, after the heat has died down, he's going to make his way back to Alabama. He's going to work as a school teacher and he's eventually going to pass the bar exam in 1858. As his men is descending the north slope of Big Round Top towards that saddle between the Round Tops, he is going to spot through the trees the Union wagons. And wagons were an incredibly valuable asset at that time, not only for hauling things, but from the Confederate side, who knows what those Union wagons have inside of them. Could be food, could be shoes, could be ammunition, could be all types of things. This was a very, very appealing prize to William C. Oates. So he's going to order a small detachment of his regiment to go over there and procure those supplies. Meanwhile, 
the fourth and fifth Texas and the fourth Alabama. They are making their way through the woods to my left. They are making their way through that western slope of big round top filled with woods and boulders and trees and all sorts of inhospitable terrain to cross. And they finally come out of the woods and what greets them? Little round top filled with a thousand men of Vincent's brigade. A thousand guns glistening in the July afternoon sun here at Gettysburg. The rebels, somewhat surprised by this sight, will nonetheless dress their lines and prepare for their assault. Colonel Powell of the 5th Texas, he will write that the ascent was so difficult as to forbid the use of arms. And when we look behind us and see this boulder strewn hill, we can only imagine how difficult that terrain truly, truly was. The 5th Texas and the 4th Texas, they will attack that center line, that center line consisting of the 83rd Pennsylvania and the 44th New York. They will attack them. And it's said that the 4th Texas will charge up that hill, hooping and hollering the rebel yell, but the rebel yell can't move boulders. The initial attack on Little Round Top at the center of Vincent's line will be repulsed. But it's only the, the first of many more attacks. It's interesting to note that it's very unlikely that the three regiments here, the 4th and 5th Texas and the 4th Alabama, it's very unlikely that they were able to coordinate an attack with those two other Alabamian regiments that are descending down the north slope of Big Round Top toward the saddle. Oats and his two Alabaman regiments will descend into that saddle. And as they reach the saddle, they will be greeted by what he describes as the most destructive fire I ever saw by the 20th Maine. The rebel assault will begin at the center of Vincent's line, make its way to his right, the 16th Michigan, and then to the left of his line, the 20th Maine. The Union position at Little Round Top is under siege. Around this time, Lieutenant Charles Hazlitt, the man in charge of Battery D of the 5th U.S. Artillery, with six 10-pounder Parrot guns, will reach the crest of the hill, and he will confer with Governor K. Warren. Now, the crest of Little Round Top is not the most conducive to effective artillery fire. The guns couldn't depress low enough to reach the oncoming attackers. Not only that, but Little Round Top is a rather spiny hill. However, Hazlitt is going to confer with Governor K. Warren, and Warren will say that this is no place for efficient artillery fire, yet Hazlitt is determined to have his guns on this hill. And he will tell Governor K. Warren, never mind that, the sounds of my guns will be encouraging to our men. Hazlitt will begin to place his guns into position on the top of Little Round Top. And of course, the theme of today is this inhospitable territory strewn with boulders and trees. And he's only going to be able to get one battery into position via the team of horses. The rest, the other five guns, will have to be pulled up by hand. And mind you, a 10-pounder Parrot gun with the gun carriage can weigh nearly 1,800 pounds, nearly a ton that these Union men are pushing up this hill in the hot July afternoon sun. As more activity is going up on the top of that hill, it is going to draw some fire from Devil's Den, some sharpshooter fire coming from this direction directly behind the camera. And mind you, this is a considerable distance. You have to be a fairly decent shot. But if enough people are firing at this area, a ball is bound to hit something. And a ball will strike Governor K. Warren in the neck. Not a mortal wound. Not even a serious wound, but it will graze him in the neck. Warren, however, is not deterred. 
and he is determined to add more infantry to this hill. Meanwhile, the Confederates are continuing their assault upon this position. The Union troops are not going to be at the top of the hill, mind you. They're going to be down a little bit at what is going to be referred to as the military crest of the hill. Obviously, if they were standing at the very top, like Governor K. Warren learned himself, you become an excellent target. You are silhouetted against the sky. So these men are going to be posted somewhat down the hill, perhaps a third of the way down the hill, where they're not as easy targets. And they're going to have boulders making for excellent cover. But the Confederates are determined and they're going to continue their assault upon Little Round Top. Governor K. Warren is going to ride off in search of more men. He's going to find the 3rd Brigade of Ayers Division of the 5th Corps with Patty O'Rourke's 140th New York in the lead. And he's going to say to Patty O'Rourke, Patty, give me a regiment. And now the 140th New York, they are going to hustle into position to reinforce Little Round Top. While this is going on, the flanks of Little Round Top have become under fire and under extreme duress. The 16th Michigan, the smallest regiment within Strong Vincent's brigade, they are crumbling. The 20th Maine, they're having issues of their own. Oates' Alabamians continue to attack and attack and attack. And each time they attack, they move a little bit more to the right trying to find the end of Chamberlain's line. So Chamberlain is going to refuse his line on the south slope of Little Round Top. And he's going to refuse his line into a position that almost looks like a hairpin, a miniature salient, if you will. And his already thin line no doubt, growing thinner by the minute, is stretched even further. The situation is becoming dire. The 44th and the 48th Alabama, they have finally made their way through this valley. They have finally taken care of those regiments for the Union that were blocking them, and they have joined the Texans in their attack. And the 16th Michigan is feeling the pressure. The 16th Michigan is going to begin to slowly fall back one end of the union line is starting to crumble here at little round top the 20th main they're continuing to deal with the constant onslaught of alabamians their ranks growing ever thinner this valiant stand at little round top is quickly quickly turning into a defeat as this fighting is going on on this small hill behind me the position at Devil's Den for the Union has crumbled. Ward's brigade is in retreat. The rebels have secured victory at Devil's Den, and they soon see that victory will be secured here at Little Round Top. And if they take this hill, they will have access to the Tawny Town Road, the Baltimore Pike, the rear of the Union line. They will be able to cut off General George Meade and perhaps secure that decisive victory that Robert E. Lee is so intent upon gaining here at Gettysburg, that grand Napoleonic triumph that will lead the Northern politicians to the negotiating table to recognize the independence of the Confederate States of America. The Confederates have victory within their grasp. Soon the colors of the 16th Michigan will disappear. Perhaps they were rolled up in the retreat. Perhaps they've fallen upon the ground with their color guard. And the firing in this sector of the hill is going to die down. However, the 83rd Pennsylvania and the 44th New York, they are going to stand strong. And they are going to continue to repulse these Confederate attacks. So much so that the 4th Alabama is going to give up and retreat back to the woods of Big Round Top. Still, Oates' men here, near the saddle, engaging with the 20th Maine, every attack 
makes its way further and further to the left flank, the far left flank of the Union line. The situation on this flank is quickly becoming like the situation on this flank. And not only that, but Strong Vincent has been wounded and carried from the field. Colonel Rice of the 44th New York is going to take command of the brigade here on Little Round Top. Where is the 140th New York? Where is the rest of the 5th Corps? Where are the reinforcements? The situation has become dire for the Union. The Confederates are able to put more men in this position in a quicker amount of time than they have been able to. What will happen? Will they lose this key position? What will become of Vincent's former command here at Little Round Top? Stay tuned for part two of Little Round Top. Thank you guys so much for joining me. As always, this is Forward Gettysburg, and I'm your host, Aaron Smith, and I will catch you on the next one.